this and I'll get this really good. So all of our experiences together are nice and calm. Even now I might lead ahead a little and let my arms down, but did you notice how I settled in? And I really exaggerated that to you. So that's looking pretty nice, pretty nice. All right, at this point, maybe I'll back up a step or two, bring that forehand through and off we go. I'm just about to step off the block here and step down. We'll go past the hindquarters, bring them around to us and leave the block, leave that mounting block. So I'm patterning a really great thing, which is I come up on the block, you get to take a break. And then I step off that block and we leave it. There we go. He's looking pretty good here. We'll move to the bridle. I'm still watching him. I'm still able to stop at any time. If I can stop him, if I can stop him, then I'm able to gain a little space and now we could continue on and lead. I don't mind a little space. He doesn't mind that either. If I turn, good, we halt. It's looking nice. I see how he's getting coiled and ready to move that hindquarters. Good. Sort of bringing myself back towards the center and maybe even as a bonus near that, near that mounting block. That's pretty handy. I'm gonna take our time here. He, he, there, he could get a little softer. He's kind of holding his neck tense. He's a, he's a little rigid. Good, wouldn't mind him just sorta of relaxing in here a little bit. So many, so many times I'll tell people, you might have a goal. You might come to the barn and we all have goals and your goal might be today you wanna jump the ditch, but you go, get your horse your horse is more tense for whatever reason but your horse is more tense that day and maybe it takes you longer to get that horse saddled that day well for me all plans are subject to change so if i need to i'll work on this and i'll get this really good so all of our experiences together are nice and calm maybe i don't get to the ditch that day but at least I had a good saddling session, mounting session. And could we get these horses to where he's calmer when I'm with him in this ring right now than if he were on his own and I walked out? It seems like a little thing, but for some people, their horse is actually way more tense when they're around. All right, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna reach under and bridle him with my arm under. So you know, there's sort of two approaches to this and I'll work on both. So I might go arm under. Notice I tipped his nose to the side. And, and then I'll bring that outside ear first and then the inside ear in second. Okay, now I might just ask him to get soft with that. Oh, he's a little stuck. He's a little, he's a little braced and see those feet don't wanna come back yet. He's, he's working at it, there we go. When I take the bridle off or put the bridle on, I want those reins right up by his ears, right up behind his jowl. Let's, let's take this bridle off and show you this. So I'll still tip his nose to the side when I drop or sort of bring the bit out gently. All right, now let's, let's walk. I'm just gonna walk away here because he, he liked that I took that bridle off, that head stall off. All right, well, here's if I take my hand up and I just put a gentle pressure down, now don't force it. And the other thing is I'll, I'll think of sort of slightly bending and almost like I swing the head down. If you're, if you're pushing hard, you're not, that isn't not the idea. You're, you're not at doing it at the right time. So he's gotta be relaxed. But if I just gently sort of bring my hands left to right, with just a little downward pressure, I mean, it's very subtle. There's many ways to get his head down, but that's a great way to do it. So now his head's down here. Now I could take my right hand and be up between the ears. So I could take my right hand and I could be up here and I could grab the crown piece 
and he could take the bit from this position. He could have dropped his head lower, but actually this isn't bad at all. Now that's probably not what he did on the track. I'm guessing on the track, they reached under his head and lifted up. So that's your other method. Try to get that forelock out of there. We could, I could just remind him, hey, can you get your head down there? All right. See, I took time on it. That's really important. I'll make our adjustments. So that's looking pretty nice. As I tighten up that girth, I'm able to tip, tip his nose to me. And I ride with I ride with multiple, uh, use this head stall on multiple horses here at the barn, so it's making them smile a little bit. Let's drop it down here. Now in a gelding, you want to watch the canine. It doesn't hit the canine. It, if you put your finger behind the mouthpiece, that's the true gauge of how much it's pulling on the lip. Also, if you notice the cheek pieces, they should sort of come off the side and sort of come back without snapping quickly. So some people leave a bit a little looser. On a mare, you can get by with that. On a gelding, you're gonna bring it up a little bit. I'm content with where, where this bit is at on him. All right. In the event that you might wanna lunge or do a little round penning with your horse, you can twist the reins up, so they're, it's like this, and then you can run, throat latch through, and go up. Some people have never learned that. It's just something you can do, and then the reins are in a good, in, are in a good place. Well, he was a little balled up with the, he was a little balled up with the girth. So, we might work on that just a little bit here. I recommend that a horse that you're not, you know, as, as sure with, like this, like a horse like this, that you would walk trot canter both directions on the ground before you get on. The canter is a gate that's playful and the canter is a gate that horses are energetic their life comes way up their emotional thermometer is much higher than say standing in the barn or walking so the canter is a gate that you you might want to check out before you get on your horse it's more it gives you a pretty nice read to your horse's emotional levels notice i send them off sort of think about leading Get a little drive in there. See how little I can do? I really am thinking canter, but I'm thinking about bringing his life up a little at a time. You might see his eyes and his ears open a little bit. To redirect here. His eyes, his eyes opened up a lot there. Let's bring him past a little more. A little more energy. I'd like him to find the canter. I realize the stirrup slipping down. He felt it, didn't he? He felt that. Good. I'll, I'll take that. It wasn't a long time at the canter, but it, it was fine. It was the idea. Look at him. He looks like a little colt. He raced until he was eight, from what I'm told. That's a long time for, for at least a horse like this. And, you, you know, it's amazing to me that he still feels the girth. And, and he's sensitive to that still. I'm going to bring his life up a little bit more. See if I can just send him off with a little more life at the canter. Might get, there, might get a little length. Good, I'll take that. And then I'll step out of the center. If I turn towards him and get tall, it makes sense to halt. It's kind of like a traffic guard saying, stop, wait. It's the same thing. Come with me. Wait. Good. Very good. 
And you can see he's bringing his life down. So as much as we would bring the horse's life up, it's really important that we can also bring their life down. So here I'll bring his life up a little more. We'll see if we can get him to think about sending off. See how little I can do? Want to help him get the answer? Good. Good. He's thinking about me. Let's get one more canter in here. Good. As I'm content with the canter, I'd come back to the center. And I'm trying to show him that I like his canter so much that I'll step out of the center and you can come to me. So he's understanding that quite well now.